Hey friends, it's KT and this is the Nerf Elite Junior Rambler. It is a eight shot uh, cylinder blaster with low power but high quality. It's specifically designed for smaller hands, smaller kids. And I mentioned in my recent video covering Elite Junior that this had a weird problem where it is designed to have slam fire, but the slam fire does not work correctly. If you're not familiar with slam fire, it is uh, when a blaster, which normally would work by pumping once and then pulling the trigger to fire, can also be operated by holding the trigger down and simply pumping, and every time you pull the pump grip forward, it'll fire a dart. And that allows you to rack off a bunch of shots really fast. Now it would be really cool if this had slam fire and it clearly was designed to have slam fire, but this thing has been happening with certain recent Hasbro designs, including the um, uh, Nerf Roblox Viper Strike and some other things where it seems that they built the functionality into it, but didn't adjust something properly, um, or for some reason the slam fire just doesn't quite work. Just to demonstrate the issue to you, pump, that's what a normal fire sounds like. If I hold the trigger all the way down and start operating the pump grip as if to slam fire, you can hear there's no release of pressure on that. But if I slightly release the trigger, then you can hear that it starts to fire on each push forward. So what we're gonna be doing is blocking the trigger so that it won't depress completely, but it still goes back far enough to fire the blaster normally. I've been discussing a bunch with my, my friends and collaborators over at the Provisional Nerf News Network, Vile Mods and Jolt King 627 about uh, how they've been fixing slam fire in a bunch of these blasters that have this problem. And I wanted to offer a guide on how to use that uh, concept on this blaster in a way that is simple enough that you could make it your first mod project with a kid who is the correct age for using this blaster, um, anywhere from uh, four to eight. So I'm gonna try to go as step-by-step step as I can on this, uh, including the process of opening it up. And I'm also using a method that doesn't require any special parts. You shouldn't have to order anything. The only things you'll need are some glue and a very small amount of some kind of material, like a plastic or wood, that you can use to fill a spot inside the blaster and the tools to work with whatever that material is. And of course, you'll also need a screwdriver of some kind that is a small enough Phillips head and a skinny enough Phillips head shaft to fit inside some of the deeper screw holes on some parts of the blaster. I like to use an electronic screwdriver. I have a uh, Milwaukee PH1 bit, which is a really great skinny bit that works super well with a lot of these skinny screw holes. That said, I have already opened this one up. I'm not going to make you watch me unscrew all the screws, but I am going to show you step by step what I think is the best order to open this up. And we're going to start with what I think is the most annoying part of the blaster, which is taking this ring off the front of the scope. Normally this would be clipped on right here. You can see the hole in this, and this little clip would be through it. And this has to come off because the whole blaster is split down the middle and this blue part actually goes all the way down. All of this blue stuff is the same large part, all the stuff that's the same color. And so without taking this off, you can't actually take the two halves of the blaster apart. And what you're gonna need for that is something thin enough to wedge underneath here so that you can hold this clip down. I used a spudger like this, but you could potentially use an old credit card and slice it up. I actually took one of these old iFixit cards and cut a little strip off of it. Um, you can get kind of creative. It also depends on how much you're willing to lose this part of the blaster. You can see that I left some stress marks on it. Um, and part of that is just because this spudger has some width to it. If you have an even thinner object that you can wedge this open with, you can probably do this with less damage. But what you want to do is get something in under here so that you're pressing down on that little notch. And once you have it in there, stick something in the hole from the side to hold it open, flip it over, and then do that again. And then you should be able to just pop this off. 
And like I said, that is far and away the most annoying part of this process. So the next thing is going to be to remove the pump grip itself. You can see that there's three screw holes each of them is simply unscrewed. I just leave the screws in there. This blue piece comes off. And then this green piece and this other blue piece are kind of tucked together, but they come out easily with no resistance. And you're just gonna wanna take all three of these parts. I like to just leave this intact with the screws sitting in it and just set them aside somewhere safe. Now you can see we have 19 screw holes on the blaster. Now, almost all of these screws are the same size. There's a slight difference between these slightly longer screws in a couple places. Typically those would exist back here on spots where the stock is. As far as I can tell, it doesn't really matter if you get these screws mixed up. They're going to go back in okay. The difference is pretty minimal. You may punch through into something on the other side but it hasn't nothing is so tightly packed in here that if you put too long of a screw in it you're going to mess it up and the shorter screws are still long enough to grip everywhere it needs to so you don't really have to worry too much about keeping the screws in the exact place but again the longer ones typically go here there is one thing that keeps this shell together and that is these grip scales so you want to get this light blue piece out here. You want to start to separate the two clamshell parts of the handle here until you can separate the handle enough that when you push it back down, you've now popped this light blue part out and you can go ahead and pull it out. I think the screw got kind of in there. There we go. And now you can pull that part out. Again, I'm just keeping the screws in it and its partner on the other side, you can kind of poke it out with a tool or your screwdriver. And now we have the two halves of those grip scales out. And now you can see that this part here keeps the seam from being on the spot where your fingers go. And this just slides right off and it's two pieces that lock in together. You can set that aside too. And at that point, as long as all of your screws are completely loose, and I seem to have one that's attempting to grip again, uh, the two halves of the blaster should just come apart. And remember the scope, ugh, the scope is part of the shell of the blaster. So you gotta make sure that this part gets separated as well. And then you are open. Now the first thing that I recommend doing is looking right here this little tiny piece behind the cylinder with the spring on it, you don't want to lose this. And if it gets knocked, it'll go flying. So I would actually suggest carefully putting your thumb over this and pulling the whole thing out without losing any of it and setting this aside somewhere safe, because this is the kind of part that will, that spring will just make it go flying and you'll lose it. And just because it kind of gets in the way, you can even take the whole cylinder and just pull it out and set it aside pull all of these sling mounts and things off and just simplify what's in the blaster. And in fact, this entire mechanism can just come out really, really easily because we won't be working on this or changing anything about it. You can see that it's greased and lubricated inside to make sure that it moves smoothly. Mine is well lubricated and it seems to work quite well, but I'm just gonna set this whole thing apart. And the nice thing about it is that it's because it's all in one attached piece, and there's really only one way it can fit inside the blaster, it's very easy to put back together later. And moving further, we see here that we have the trigger, and the trigger has its spring, and it rests on this little catch. This is the part that we're going to be working on, so it's good to understand how this mechanism works. Now conveniently, this dark blue part of the grip actually comes off without anything else going on, and you can set this aside as well. And now we have this, which is really the only part we need to do anything with. On my unit, this spring is pretty well attached to the trigger, so when I pull it out, it doesn't go flying, which is very nice. But I would still be careful when you're pulling the trigger out that your spring, um, just in case it's not attached quite as well as mine is. But this one is, this one's on there pretty good. The next thing we're gonna be doing is looking for a small piece of material to put in here to stop the trigger from moving all the way back. It really only needs to be a couple millimeters thick and you want it to fit in there pretty snugly. You can literally get this material from anything. Like I mentioned, it's really about whatever material you're comfortable working with. So it could be a piece of wood. You could 3D print a filler for this if you wanted to. Or what I'm gonna do is just cut some pieces off of this broken Air Max boss that I have lying in my bin. This piece of material is 
from a Busby blaster. And as you can see, it's about a millimeter and a half thick, a little bit thicker. There's a decent amount of leeway in here, but any recycled plastic from a broken toy that's flat will probably work just fine. I actually went so far as to cut a little notch in the bottom of this piece of plastic and I simply eyeballed cutting it to size to get it to fit in here. So I'm actually gonna go with hot glue for this, uh, which is great because it's reasonably permanent but also could just be a test fit. I can wind up pulling it back out if I want. I'm sure I don't need to tell anybody watching this video, little kids shouldn't be using a hot glue gun on their own. Uh, I'm intending this, of course, to be a, a parent and a kid working together. But I'm just going to stick some hot glue down there and then jam this on top of it and poke it down in there with a tool. So as you can see, we're now preventing a certain amount of travel from uh, for the trigger. And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna dry fit the blaster back together and see if that's enough to fix the slam fire. And when you're putting this whole mechanism back in, you're looking for two main things. This part of the mechanism up here, which uh, has the catch in it, which is the thing that actually releases the spring and allows the air pressure to go out, tucks into this notch here. And then this part here, which is the rotation mechanism that makes sure that the cylinder rotates correctly, needs to sit in this slot right here, like so. And then we don't actually need to put the cylinder or its indexing part, the thing with the spring that we pulled out originally back in yet. We just need our trigger right here. And then we're going to put this on and this is obviously not fully assembled, but it's enough for us to test what we need to test. So I can pull this back and push it forward to prime and I can fire and I can hold this down. And we can see we have already fixed the problem. So now all we have to do is reassemble the blaster. So the only other parts that we removed from the interior of the blaster are this cylinder and what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that this white part sits all the way in the other side of this cavity that it fits in, like so. It should push back slightly on this white part, which is the plunger tube. And now you wanna take this indexing piece. It fits right here. And you'll notice that there's a thick wall on this side and a thin wall on this side. You wanna take the longer tab and put it on the thick side. And then this spring should compress and sit inside this cavity. And when it sits correctly, you'll see that it tucks into the little notches on the inside of this cylinder. And the purpose of that is to make sure that the cylinder stops when each of the barrels is lined up with the plunger tube. And then the next thing you want to remember is to put your sling mounts back on. Now we're going to line this back up. And there's a number of screw posts up and around here that you'll want to make sure get aligned again. So you can see right here, there's a screw post that has to get tucked down in and that seems to have largely done it. Mm, there's another one down here. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use my electric screwdriver to put most, if not all of these screws back in. And we'll check in when that's done. Now 
Now, if you're new to screwing and unscrewing blasters, one thing you do need to be very careful of is not to over tighten screws. You can strip them inside the blaster and it sure can be a pain later on. One other thing I realized I forgot to mention is there's a screw underneath this grip. Hmm. And predictably, we are missing one screw. This is kind of just the way of the world, isn't it? Not super concerned about that though. I'm missing this screw right here. This part will hold that in place and there's no structural importance to this. Also, I have this giant thing of screws that have come out of other Nerf blasters. So if need be, I will just uh, put in a new one. But what we are gonna do right now is put the uh, pump grip back on and do a little bit of testing and see if we have in fact fixed our problem. Now putting the pump grip back on can be a little bit tricky because you have to line up this ridge with these grooves in the side of the blaster. So while also lining these holes up with these screw posts, but also the green grip has to be in place when that happens. So you kind of have to fiddle with it a little bit to convince it to go. There we go. And then this goes back on. And as you recall, we actually left the screws in here. So this is just ready to go back together. Now, before we worry about any of the cosmetic parts, we're going to go ahead and pop some darts in the front of this and give it a test. And if it slam fires, I'd say we're good to go. This is an FVJ, uh, what we call a full vinyl jacket. You can tell that the head is shinier than most of the other Nerf darts and it's harder and more painful to get hit with. So if you ever see these or if you've bought darts off Amazon and they have that hard plastic head as opposed to the slightly softer rubber head, get rid of these. Generally speaking, uh, your common Nerf dart is going to be a safer dart, but I actually recommend buying something like Adventure Force Waffles or uh, Dart Zones, other darts that you can get at uh, Target. So let's give this a try. Here's a normal shot. Here's Slam Fire. And just that simple, we seem to have fixed the problem. So I think we're ready to button this blaster back up. So we have this grip insert that goes right here and these parts tuck in like so. We insert this from back here, this from the top, tighten these screws down. And my missing screw has not turned up, so I'm going to pick one of these. And then this part, you kind of just have to force it back on. This aiming reticle fits in this notch down in the bottom, so you want to make sure that gets lined up. And you're good to go. And now you have a Nerf Elite Junior Rambler with slam fire. Now again, that material that goes in there behind the uh, spring guard on the trigger can literally be anything. You could design a very simple 3D printed file. You could get a piece of wood and cut it down and notch it as long as it's rigid enough to hold the tension. So there you go. There's how to fix the slam fire on the Nerf Elite Junior Rambler. I really hope that some parent kid duos dig into this and do this this modification for themselves and can get a little more fun out of this toy that I think is really, really great. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like this video, uh, subscribe to the channel. I hope to do more things like this. And um, until next time, I'll see you on the field.